Question. Can you fully automate a multi-step, multi-form process in Fluix in order to completely eliminate paper? Answer, yes. Hi, I'm Brandon with Fluix, and with many of our new customers, they're just getting started in going paperless, and it's great to help them start this journey. But if you think bigger, you can do more than just go digital. You can make a process fully automated, eliminating unnecessary steps, even getting rid of emails and check-ins in the process. That's where you see real speed and transformation in your company. In this video, I'll show you how using Fluix task streams with conditional logic will help you go beyond paperless to fully automated. Let's dig in. Let's use an example of a work order request. A work order request might be placed by somebody at a remote location or inside your office. When that work order request is placed, in some situations, we might want that work order to be routed to an external contractor, but in others, we might want it routed to our internal maintenance team. Conditional logic with Fluix allows you to do this. Now, in both those cases, we might want that contractor or that internal maintenance team to fill out a work order ticket indicating the work that they've done. When that work order ticket has been done with a contractor, it goes to a supervisor, but with the maintenance team, it goes to a director. And then once the ticket is completed and reviewed, the ticket can be closed. Let's show how to do this in Fluix. All right, let's take a look at that work order process when built within a Fluix task stream. Here's an overview of the task stream with all of its tasks and its conditional logic. The first task is that any user can submit a work order request using the work order request form. It has certain fields that are read only and certain fields that are required in order to start the work order request. Now, depending on which category, which is one of the fields in the form, is selected, in this case, the HVAC category, that determines which team the work order request is routed to. In my example, an HVAC work order request is routed to an external user that's in the group called ABC Contractors. This might be an external consulting company or a contracting company that my company works with for this type of repair work. If HVAC is not chosen in the conditional logic, that's the else condition, then it's routed to my internal maintenance team. So I have tasks for each of those teams. I have a task for the contractors and I have a task for the maintenance team depending on who gets the work order request routed to them. With the ABC contractors, they're given a task that says begin the work order from location and department. The location and department are fields within the work order request that were filled in by one of the previous users in the previous step. In the case of the maintenance team, they have something similar. Begin a work order from, and the location is selected from a field in the form. Now, in addition to reviewing the form that was filled in by the original user, the work order request, they have a new form that's been added to their tasks, the work order ticket, and ha it has its own required fields and read-only fields and so forth. It includes allowing the work order ticket filler to provide photos from their work order that they're performing. Once the maintenance team or the contractors have completed their task, depending on which team they're on, determines how that form is routed. In the case of my contractors, it's routed to a senior supervisor who has their own task to review the work. In the case of my work order form from the my maintenance team, it's routed to a director to review that work that's performed. And in this case, the directors or the senior supervisors, they can review the forms, but also not be allowed to edit any of the fields within that form. They may only be allowed to sign off on the form itself. Once all of these steps are completed, I may have one final step that I want to accomplish, and that is where does a archive of this work get loaded to? In my case, I have a completed version of the forms being uploaded to the cloud in Fluix storage, but this could be SharePoint, or it could be OneDrive or Dropbox or any other location. Same thing with my maintenance team's completed work orders. The completed version of both documents is filed away in the work orders folder in the cloud. In addition to that, I can ensure that other people receive a courtesy copy of those work orders. 
And those email addresses that are used for the courtesy copies can be either hard-coded or can be pulled from the form itself or be pulled from the system as far as performers who completed certain tasks so they get their own courtesy copy. And that's it. Now, let's take a look at what this looks like within the Fluix app for each of these users. All right, so our first user, the person who's gonna submit the work order request, is sitting at their computer at some desk or workstation in the company. They'll come into Fluix, choose the form that they wanna start, the work order request, start the progress, which starts a timer, and they fill in all of the required fields as well as any additional fields. Now, in this case, you'll notice I have required fields because I have a red border around each of these fields. And I have a signature field that allows me to verify that I'm the one completing this order. You'll also notice that the technician notes down here at the bottom is a field, but it's a read-only field. That's because I'm not the one that's going to be completing the work order. I'm the one that's submitting the work order request. Now, let me speed forward a little bit faster and fill in this form. All right, I've filled in this form, and so now all I need to do to continue the process is click the Save button and finish the task. All right, now let's say I work for ABC Contractors who got this new ticket submitted to them from my customer. You'll notice a push notification came up, and that's because I'm now working for my iPad. I'm a technician who's working on the go, so I can disclose or close that ticket. I can go to my to-do and you can see at the top, I've had a task assigned to me, begin work order from East Warehouse Manufacturing. So I have a little bit more context about the task itself and what needs to be performed. If I tap on that task, I can see both forms now that I need to take action on. There's the form that included the initial work order request and I can view that form with all the details that the person submitted previously. I can also add my notes specifically to that request. I'm not gonna add notes in this case. And I've got the work order ticket that I can now begin. And I've got my own required fields, including the ability to add images and add comments on the right-hand side or notes. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit quickly here to fill in this form and we'll continue on with the next step in the process. All right, so I filled in all of the required fields in this form and I even added a photo. And one nice thing about this photo is it's been time stamped, date stamped, and location stamped, and I can't change that as the person filling in the form. So once I've completed my role in the process, I'll simply hit save, finish the task, and now that task has been pushed on to the next step in the task stream automatically. Let's take a look at what happens there. All right, now I'm the senior supervisor and a ticket has been completed and assigned to me to take a review of. Review the work order dated 9-2-2022 from East Warehouse Manufacturing. I can click on that. I can see two forms are attached to that task. I can start progress on the task. I can review the ticket that the contractor filled in. And one thing that you'll notice about this is I can't change anything about this form. I don't have the permission to make any changes to it. So it's not editable at all. It's just a chance for me to preview it. I'll save that one. I'll look at the work order request that came through, the original work order request that was published. It's also read only. I hit save and I simply finish the task. That entire process is now complete. So we've taken the process all the way from work order request assigned to the ABC contractor external users and finished up with the senior supervisor. So if we go back into Fluix and see that task stream one more time, you'll notice that this entire flow is what we just followed. It was automatically routed to the ABC contractors because of that field having conditional logic with the HVAC field being chosen. Let's take one more look at the form just to show you exactly what it looks like so it's used for conditional logic. All right, that form was designed and saved in the form library in my Fluix account. The work order request is the form itself, and you'll notice I have a field called category. When I click on the category in that field, I have all of these options available. The one I'm using for this conditional logic is right here, HVAC. If it's an HVAC selection, 
that form will be routed to an external team. And if any of these other options are chosen, it will be routed to my internal maintenance team. So Fluix can be that smart where it chooses one specific option out of so many available options for routing purposes. And if I go back to the task stream, you'll notice I could have gotten even more complicated and more sophisticated with my process. I have one condition here and that's HVAC. I could have chosen to add an additional condition here and that condition could have been based on the category field as well. But in this case, it might've been plumbing, for example. So let's say instead of it being HVAC, it could be plumbing. So we'll make another condition and that is plumbing. And you'll notice what happened. I have a new option on the left-hand side over here and I can create a process that I want to follow whenever plumbing is selected instead of HVAC. So you can get really sophisticated with how you route your requests and your forms for approvals based on criteria within the form and it works like a charm. All right, that's an introduction into using Fluix task streams with conditional logic and our exclusive feature, dynamic values, in order to take a process from paper-based to fully automated. Now, if you have questions about whether your processes would be a good fit for automation with Fluix, click the Get Started button on our website to speak with an expert in process automation. Thanks for watching.